All right, this is Scott with Dashing Nerds, back with my pals. Peter Spasia, rhymeswithasia.com. Joe DeVader, at the debug on Twitter. And last night, Sony had their E3 press conference. So what did we think about it? Not, not impressed. It just it wasn't good. I just, you know, lame after lame after lame, and just it just kept going. And it, it, it was, I was depressed with how boring it was. Yeah. Oh, wait, you said Sony, not EA. Oh! oh. <laughs> well, you know, that's, that's right. Best. That's right. Wait, okay. All right. You're right. Sony was the good one. Sony had a very different approach, and I think it, it paid off tremendously. I think it, it, it was, it was, was very, fantastic. Very good. Very good. Uh, Opening with the orchestra just playing the new track. Mm-hmm. The track from uh, God of War was announced, the new God of War. You know, that's nice. They're back at the Shrine Theater. It mm-hmm. gives space for an orchestra in the pit. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little long for a track that we don't have any you know, nostalgic connection to. Connection right. to. Uh, but you could tell immediately with Mail Channel, like, okay, well, here's God of War. You're going to open with God of War. But the cool thing to have it playing throughout, mm-hmm. you know, even during the demos, uh, that, that was a really, right. really neat touch. Right, God of War looks amazing. It's still not quite sure if it's a reboot of the entire series or if it's kind of just like a continuation where Kratos it, it has established have, a new family, perhaps. It or, seems to have there's, bits of both. Yeah, there's arguments on called, both sides. It's still called Spartan Rage, so obviously it seems like he's still a Spartan. The game the director, the game director, has made a statement that said it is after God of War three. Okay. Uh, okay. That it's not really a reboot, but they're certainly trying a lot of new things. I mean, it would yeah. mm-hmm. it would make sense. Kratos is a god. He is immortal. He wouldn't just die of old age. So mm-hmm. it was a very different Kratos mm-hmm. than we're used to seeing. It's like yeah, the temper flare and everything showed up occasionally, but he suppressed it almost working with his son mm-hmm. and. Showing him how to hunt and deal with things like that. It was a very interesting Kratos. The gameplay looked almost Tomb Raider. Like the, it, it looks like it will have a bit more of an exploration kind of feel as mm-hmm. a la Tomb Raider or things like that. I got a very Last of Us vibe. Yeah, I, was, I would say like Uncharted. After just playing Uncharted 4, it's like, okay, well, the exploration kind of feels a little bit like... With the camera placement and the beautiful vistas and moving about that way. You got a kid uh, now. Right, right. I, I think... it. Some people are saying with Sony's games, especially the ones they showed, like it seems to be kind of carrying that trend a little bit. And I think that maybe is a little worrisome mm-hmm. where you know, when you just follow up on Uncharted Four, when you have God of War that looked like that, you had Sony Ben's game, you had mm-hmm. Horizon, you have these kind of styles that you, mm-hmm. you have the camera behind the there and it, it's focusing on, you know, the right. beautiful views. Uh, I think that's that's uh, you wanna kinda of distinguish your your library a bit more and you right. do have the last guardian and games mm-hmm. like this but it's just something for them to keep an eye on and not repeat too much well i didn't i didn't so much get the feeling of like a last of us or in char which is much more l- linear to an extent because when you walked in it said the location was discovered you get knowledge gank things like that i almost get that's where i get more of the tomb raider-esque exploration and when they panned up and you saw the mountains and you saw the different vistas it's like well, I don't think it's going to be an open world like a Skyrim or things like that. I think it'll be much more like area based, kind of almost like a Dark Souls, where there's places where you can visit and kind of go off and explore on your own. Like but it's, yeah. it's not as linear as a Last of Us right. it's or the Dark Souls of God of War. I was just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's their reboot. I'm surprised they didn't go the God of War four title, and maybe that's I'm you know, to actually come. super upset that it's called God of War. Stop doing that. Yes. Yeah, they yeah. might still add a subtitle and things like that. I mean, it's definitely not a I this year so. release. I'm I'm so sick of games just being named the same as their first installment. Yeah, and we have to rely on you know the mm-hmm. year of release. I mean, Ratchet and Clank recently. I mean, perfect example there. Just yeah, we shouldn't have to say Ratchet and Clank. Oh, you mean the 2016 one or the 2002? The one? game like, based on a movie based on yeah, a game. Yeah. Like it's confusing, and mm-hmm. everybody's doing it. And stop it. Yeah. Um, after that, Ben Studios came out and announced their new title that they've been working on, Days Gone, mm-hmm. previously known as Dead Don't Ride. Yeah, I mean, that just got trademarked a couple days right. ago, and I think you know, Days Gone is a more appropriate title. Mm-hmm. You could almost see it more as like kind of like a Last of Us subtitle in a way. Right. Uh, that was almost what people like. If, if you heard Days Gone, like that's almost what you'd think of. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's you know survival, zombies, survival. It's like the fourth or fifth zombie game we saw this yeah. year. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely been. I'm re- I'm ready to get off the zom- zombie apocalypse train. Well, especially know, with well, the demo. Yeah. The thing with the trailer was it didn't show what the 
uh, enemies were. So everybody was saying, oh, please don't be zombies. Mm-hmm. And then they did the demo at the end, which was a terrible way to end the show. And lo and behold, it's zombies. And I didn't see a single person mm-hmm. excited about that. Lots and, of zombies. And fast do- zombies. I mean, yeah, of course, like when you're playing the game, you're going to be mm-hmm. running away and not stopping and unloading clip after clip after clip <laughs> into all of them. But, uh, yeah, it's... It looks fun, but it's, it's a game type that has been done to oblivion at this point mm. it's just been done over and over and over yeah, again they've been working on it, it for it's a very long pretty time, so. um i'm not throwing like it's going to be a crappy game i don't think that at all yeah, I, don't I think, think it's, it's just be bad it's just it's a well treaded genre at this point yeah, so too treaded almost yeah last guardian we got a i like how they did last guardian it was just a short little new trailer mm-hmm. showed us some new gameplay and finally gave us a release date for of October twenty fifth for Last Guardian, so we finally know when that's coming. Yeah, and and you have a second cat Griffin. So, yeah. yeah, so that's interesting. Um, I I really liked how they approached Last Guardian because they've shown Last Guardian so many times now and for so long, and people know the idea of what it is, things yeah. like that. Just a short, sweet, not tons of time taken. Here's a little look. It looked a bit better than last year. It looked yeah. uh, like a step up from the PS three version. More so than the re-announcement almost trailer from last year. It is unusual that the the boy protagonist gives off this like cell shaded kind of vibe mm-hmm. a little mm-hmm. bit, whereas the other, you know, kind of art style doesn't right. seem to entirely do that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that's maybe my only question about it. I'm but feeling it, like yeah. he's the last guardian. That's maybe that's probably true. Because if there's more than one of those cat griffin things, obviously they're not the guardians. So mm-hmm. they're not because they're not the last ones. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Who knows? It's not. It's Last Guardian, not Last Guardians. Yeah. Uh, after that, Horizon came off. They showed another really, really well done demo. Hack a cow. Uh, gameplay <laughs> of Horizon Zero Dawn. That I, I'm really excited for that from yeah, Gorilla. That's gonna be great. I mean, to show the mechanics a little bit more with the crafting mm-hmm. and all the different kinds of arrows. Yeah, this this was a good demo. Um, maybe a little long. Uh, but to show mm-hmm. you know the animal mounts and mm-hmm. to hack it that way, that was a nice touch. I hope you can mount any of them, I even want, yeah. the, the, the big ones. I want the, big the big giant giraffe, giraffe ears. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, it it's such a unique and interesting take on the kind of post apocalyptic genre mm. because that it's, it's, it's not zombies. It's you see ruins of actual cities. They very clear that this is Earth. I saw yeah. somebody describe something it as, happened. It is. It's not post-apocalyptic. It's post-post-apocalyptic. Yeah, where th- yeah. things are coming back, and yes. I'm in. I'm going to be really intrigued to see how the machines like stayed around and things like that. It'll be interesting. They introduced a corrupting machine, so obviously some old technology is corrupting the more current yeah. machinery. It's peaceful, stuff. peaceful one. There are still normal animals. We saw like boars and birds and things like that running yeah. around. Yeah. So it's not just robotic creatures anymore in this world so that's interesting that's exciting i mean at that point mm-hmm. i'll be delving into persona 5 uh but yeah you know, that's still one that's on my radar for purchase yeah. yeah it's very cool we saw a bit more after that of detroit become yeah. human yeah uh, very confused quantic dream saying. game so multiple choices kind of uh, create your own adventure story multiple protagonists definitely a, a wider branching mm-hmm. sort of array of choices i mean to see that web there kind of at the end i of that, thought that it was, was a really very impressive. It was a smart way to show the different branching paths mm-hmm. yeah. to kind of give the idea of what the game is without necessarily being in your face about it. Yeah. It's, it's smart. Just, they did it very smart. They, it was one situation, mm-hmm. and it was all the different ways that that situation could mm-hmm. go. Mm-hmm. And I think that was a very good way of showing off just branching paths instead of being like, oh, instead of getting somebody up there to talk about, right. hey, you know... Yeah, now what if you did it this way yeah, you know yeah. it was and that's overall that's something sony did well is there were two instances where somebody came out and talked to the audience mm-hmm. take notes guys because nobody cares we want to mm-hmm. see the games that's why right. we're watching no, they, they did a great job with that uh, multiple protagonists in detroit for us uh, we live yeah. and Pete and I have worked in Detroit, so it's very interesting to be able to see like a futuristic version of the Ren Center, different buildings that we look out at and see every day. That, so that's a bit unusual, and uh, no, I'm I'm excited for mm-hmm. that. You have like the detective kind of stuff from Heavy Rain coming back right. a bit, and for the people that don't like you know David Cage games, like I I like them. I think uh, it's I a don't, I don't like them or hate them kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, and that's, it's not a and I love them, but I'll. 
Right. I'm looking forward to Detroit. It'll be interesting. I I want to see mostly just because of living and working in Detroit. I'm curious to see how much we can kind of explore futuristic Detroit. Mm-hmm. In how closely they kind of recreated future Detroit. If I, I should, can walk I around and find campus marshes. See, or... I'm, I'm different than you two on this one because I don't think I'm going to buy Detroit because I'm not a huge David Cage fan. But what I am excited for is for the best friends to get a hold of this game. Because sure. they have a grudge against David Cage. <laughs> as, as many people do. Are required to play all of his games. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, probably one of, I would say, one of the biggest surprises of E3 so far, let alone probably the biggest, well, one of the biggest surprises at any of the conference, Resident Evil 7 announced. So that demo was, I was just about ready to jump out of my seat because I thought it was going to be Silent Hill, even though knowing in my heart that it couldn't be Silent Hill. Konami wouldn't no do that way. without it being a pachinko machine. But it, it looked so Silent Hill that I was almost ready to cry. And you know what? If this Resident Evil game plays a little bit more like a Silent Hill game in first person, you know what? I'm cool with that. Yeah. Yeah. I I was getting the creeps from it. And like yeah. it doesn't happen too often with me and games. Um but like I knew Resident Evil was going to be a thing mm-hmm. this E three and it would make perfect sense with their history for it to be at PlayStation, but like I didn't Put it the was two together so different because, from what yeah, yeah. was. It's first person. It's completely first person now, and we're not used to. I mean, the latest Resident Evils, like main numerical been, Resident Evil titles, have been shoulder. run and gun. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's been explosions well, and Leon Kennedy and shooting Capcom, and zombies. Capcom has said multiple times that six was not very successful, mm-hmm. and a lot of hardcore Resident Evil fans did not like 6 and kind of didn't like 5 either Mm -hmm. because they were starting to lean towards more action and less horror and Resident Evil fans didn't like that and I believe they came out and said alright we hear you we're gonna make a horror game especially when like Revelations and Revelations 2 did so well because it was an old school Resident Evil with the horror and then they they re-released the Resident Evil remaster and Resident Evil 0 and they're making Resident Evil 2 a complete remake yeah Yeah. I think you know the one thing that also didn't you know forge the connection for me was when they advertised at the beginning that it's a full PlayStation VR experience yeah so you can play the whole thing with VR and like that's that's unusual that's different mm-hmm. but yeah it seems so much like pt which makes sense because i guess you know, the mm-hmm. pt level designer mm-hmm. uh you know from konami is now working with capcom mm-hmm. on resident evil 7 uh, that was kind of rumored and known beforehand so that makes sense why you get a lot of those kind of vibes right. um yeah it's exciting I, mean, I haven't tried the demo that's yet on playstation mm-hmm. uh, out on playstation plus awesome. yet mm-hmm. uh but looking forward to trying that very Same. creepy um very impressed by it um, January 24th, 24th yeah. is the release date so it's actually it's not even that far away if they can stick to it yeah and they have said that you will be just the goal is that you will play as pretty much just a normal person so you won't be playing as Leon or any of them no more stars people yeah. right if they just, you might encounter them but you won't be playing as I them. feel like the smart option at this point though would be to just sort of dump the mainstream Resident Evil story because mm-hmm. it's it's kind of really convoluted at this point. Yeah. I don't think they should dump it completely because they're still coming out with mm-hmm. games in that story. But I feel like if this game was disconnected from all that, that would mm. be a, a thing mm-hmm. in its favor. It would also make it a good jumping in point for yep. people right. that have never played a Resident yep. Evil game. Um, I mean, it would be for me. So, yeah. you know. Oh, for sure. After that, they went on and talked a bit about the upcoming PlayStation VR. We They said again that it was uh, 399 coming out October 30th. Uh, with 13th, 13th, October 13th, ex- yeah. October 13th excuse me, mm-hmm. and they're planning about 50 games by the end of the year. Those will probably include also like little tech demos and things mm-hmm. like that. Now full fledged games like a Fallout. And most of, most of them will just be. I assume most of them mm-hmm. will be. Yeah, you can play this game without VR, but you can also play it with VR. Or, I assume they counted those as well. Yeah, or there'll be this section where you can play it VR or yeah. you can get a special DLC that lets you play this section of this game in VR kind of like Final Fantasy 15 doing with the prompto. Yeah. yeah, doing that and you also have the, the, the Battlefront which yeah. you uh, the biggest, X-Wing yeah. VR mission. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They just confirmed that you will need the full version of Star Wars mm-hmm. Star Wars Battlefront to be able to play that which makes sense it's not a standalone separate mm-hmm. purchase thing so uh I mean, well, I'm sure it right. is. I'm sure they want to get more money out of you, but you need the base Battlefront to be able to Exactly, play that, and I so. think that'll be a great one to get people... It looked pretty from what they showed. Yeah, I think yeah. it'll be a big... Ooh, I can pilot an X-Wing in VR. That'll be really cool. Yeah. The main 
there were two really game like games that seemed like full games for the VR. That was Farpoint, the kind of sci-fi Mars based shooter that mm-hmm. they showed. Yeah. Um, and then Batman Arkham VR. Oh, yeah. I, and I feel more like Arkham VR is going to be like a fifteen minute. Like from zero. what I've read, it looks like you'll be solving a mystery, so it might be a little mm-hmm. longer. Maybe. But I maybe more detective mode. Kind it of would stuff. be more kind of detective. Yeah. I can't see it being a full sixty dollar game. No. no. Um, but, but it's nice it, that it'll Rock, be interesting. Yeah. It's nice that and Rock it's, yeah, exactly. It's so. and being Mark done, Hamill being done by Rock Study. Is, uh, Mark Hamill. Joker. Yeah. Very cool. Um, one thing that really surprised me was how fun looking the Call of Duty Infinite Warfare trailer looked. Mm. Mm. Yeah. The, like I. Call of Duty's kind of, for me anyway, run its course. I haven't picked up the past couple, but this one looked, even though it's a space shooter, like the the flying of the ships and um, grappling hooks and like the fighting space, it looked fun. Well, it's it's been a while since we've gotten an honest-to-God space shooter, because it's mm. all been modern warfare lately, except for little bits right. and pieces there, like Halo and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So they are doing kind of the same strategy as EA is, mm-hmm. but in an opposite direction where EA is going back to the past. Uh, who makes Call of Duty? I don't know. Infinity of, Ward. Don't it's Infinity Ward this Infinity, year. Yeah. Infinity Ward is going all the way the other direction, and most of the impressions I saw on Twitter were, it's really good that they showed this Call of Duty demo, and it was hard to tell that it was Call of Duty. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I was took a say, while. I, was I, I wonder... Realize. At what point most people were able to pick up that it was Call of Duty? Because that's, even the that HUD did it. It wasn't multiplayer that they were showing off. Mm-hmm. Granted, they usually have their own event to show off the multiplayer, but it was the HUD looked different. The U the UI looked different. I mean, because yeah, I follow news and all mm-hmm. that. Like I was only able to tell because they mentioned the protagonist's name of Reyes. And if you mm-hmm. you know looked into anything about that game, not really anything, but if you looked into mm-hmm. enough about that game, you know. Okay, I guess your character's name is Reyes, but otherwise, like, yeah, it would take most people well. Maybe when the reticles started popping up and you see, right. like, how the gunplay works, maybe you could pick up then it was Call of Duty. I, but I saw some people that didn't even, they couldn't tell until the title yeah, showed up. Yeah, and I think that's that's the most impressive thing out of it, yeah. And I think that's what they need right now. I think Infinity War is starting to realize that Call of Duty is... Starting to get played out. Played out, predictable, things like that. So I think Infinity, in, Infinite Warfare, excuse me, um... Should do. I'm I'm hoping it'll do a good job, kind of reinvigorating, uh, the Call of Duty name. They need the positive PR after all the YouTube trailer snafu, yeah. just drama stuff. So yeah, they need that. After that, Crash One, Two, and Warped announced as being remade remasters yeah. for um, the PlayStation Four, and that Crash is coming to Skylanders. That was a, a big announcement that a lot of people I know were hoping for. So mm-hmm. that was very cool. And like a lot I, of people were very worried about Crash being a Skylanders, but he looks like Crash. Yeah. He didn't get butchered like Spyro. So there you go. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't an excuse. It's an here it is also, yeah. and it's coming earlier because Vicarious Visions is working on the the reboots. They're or they're remasters rather. Mm-hmm. They've been working on it since 2015. Uh, they're aiming for 2017 launches there, and it's Activision uh, on the primary publishing there with a partnership for Sony, of course. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that that's a big deal. And when they say from the ground up, like it'll be interesting to see video footage of that when that comes out and how rejuvenated. Because uh, you know, if, looking if, at if, the if, first Crash game mm-hmm. recently, like it's, it's, not it's, very good. it's dated. It Playing the original yeah. Crash in Uncharted Four, mm-hmm. it would. Like, it's the, the original Crash I played a long time ago mm-hmm. on PSN, and it, it sucks. Crash two and three are still good; they yeah. still hold up pretty yeah. well. Crash one is awful, and I hope they I hope they really really fix it. Um, then they, for whatever reason, spent like five minutes going over Lego Star Wars Episode seven. You know, I mean, it shows that you know not only Lego but Star Wars kind of partnering, siding with PlayStation mm-hmm. for it, and like that's a big one. If the game's out in a couple weeks, I mean, yeah, two weeks. And so, that, and the if, demo. Yeah, if there were if there was any really low point of like, okay, why are we showing this? Yeah, it would be that. But mm-hmm. it's it's still a good game. It's still a good trailer. And right. Not, yeah. um, then our God King ascended from on high. He ascended from a shiny <laughs> st- staircase. Or descend. Yeah, descended too descended. quickly for the light yeah. bridge. <laughs> He's he doesn't take any. He does what he wants. That Kojima. Was a hell of an entrance. Kojima oh. showing off his new game. Well. A trailer that's using some in or like in-game 
I don't theoretical think footage. I don't even think it's in game because uh, last in week engine it was in it, engine. Yeah. But See, I, I think even in the interview he had after mm-hmm. with Jeff Keighley, I think they still reiterated they haven't decided on a game engine yeah. yet. Uh, and he, he wants to make it a little more action based. I mean, not mm-hmm. you know the action we know, but I think he's inspired by games like Uncharted. So again, like this is where you have to worry. Maybe right. don't go back to this kind of well of how you're structuring mm-hmm. how your game looks. Uh, it looks completely different with naked Norman Reedus carrying an umbilical cord, crying over a baby with floating people in the sky and dead whales. And then the baby's gone. And I think that's the and exciting thing. Like, on his hand. You do have a lot of themes carrying over from PT, and so like mm-hmm. it's it's good that he's still inspired by those mm-hmm. kind of things. No Del Toro connection yet, though. It would not surprise me if it later comes in out, development, right. like he said, like we've added him on because yeah, this game is. 2019, two to three oh, years away. It's, it's, a, near, it's a Kojima really. game, so it will be good when it, it like it'll be great when it comes out. Mm-hmm. It I, will just take forever. It is probably so little along that I would be surprised if we even saw the first gameplay next year or the year after. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I was surprised enough to see him show up and say, "I'm here, back. I am. I'm back. Here I am." Mm-hmm. But then to show something, yeah, that mm-hmm. was, See, that was they, pretty remarkable. I feel like, to me, I feel like that was a given. Because they kind of had to do that. Because, I mean, after all the buzz around Kojima right now, mm-hmm. that was that had to be their wow moment. It's That's bragging rights. what it's they had. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then with their last game reveal from the show was that Insomniac was making a PlayStation 4 exclusive Spider-Man game that it, it looks yeah. amazing. It looks good. It looks very fun. It looks like it's going to be the first good Spider-Man game since Spider-Man 2. Oh, Spider-Man yeah. 2 is so good too. <laughs> it's interesting like it it seems like the talk has been like this has been known for mm-hmm. a while for those working in the industry mm-hmm. which is really interesting. Uh, but yeah, it's it's really good to see and yeah, going through uh, mm-hmm. you know the, Not the tied to a game. movie or a comic or anything like that. It's just the Spider-Man game on its own. I think will be fantastic. Not being hunker or Insomniac won't be forced to meet a X release date to meet up with a movie. Or at least or, as far as yeah. as far as we know, because Homecoming is still coming sometime next That's year. That's true. That's true. Well, so. they said Insomniac was on after the press conference, and they said that this is not tied to oh, movies good, or anything good. like that. That. Mm-hmm. They'll they they weren't even ready to say if it's 2016 or 2017 release. I'm betting it's 2017, but right, right. I need to watch a direct feed of that trailer again because mm-hmm. I want to see the shot of uh, you know, Spider-Man going through the Daily mm-hmm. Bugle and like all the chaos that's oh, yeah. happening there. But they cut away from mm-hmm. that to show the the kind of wider crowd yeah. shot, and it's like. Yeah, I wish the new outfit. Yeah. His new outfit looks cool. It's still the red and blue. It's strange that they went with like the white accents on yeah, it. Yeah, I personally yeah. don't like that all that much, but it's not ruining. But see, anything. with Spider-Man games, you know you're gonna get like 50 easy, yeah. alternate yeah, Spider-Man easy. costumes. You can that's true. You easy can change swatch, into yeah. mm-hmm. so. Yeah. And the real interest, I think the real interesting thing about this is that Insomniac wasn't the rumored developer of this game. It was Sucker Punch, mm-hmm. and obviously they're not making it, which means they're making Sly Five. Uh, Clearly, that yeah, is not so. based mm-hmm. in any reality. You heard it here on Dashing Nerds. <laughs> Sly Cooper Five being worked on by Sucker Punch. See, now that we said it, you have to do it. That's how it works. With well, no well now, now that you get the uh, now you get the leak this morning of the infamous Second Son movie mm-hmm. domain going yeah. up, and like that just that throws it into a weird situation so but yeah final grades for sony oh it's a flat a like it's you know it was very good i don't think you can give it an a plus because mm-hmm. you know you did have those kind of weird moments like, yeah I mean, to end on the dead don't ride demo was oh, yeah. unusual uh, that that wouldn't been wouldn't have been like the big sucker punch in a way <laughs> how to uh, how to end that show mm-hmm. but to to have the kind of pacing that they did, and yeah, people say, well, it was an hour and fifteen minutes long. Like, did you really want it to be longer? Yeah. Because all the the length, especially when you look at Ubisoft, it was the fluff, it was the talking, quality it was... over quantity. Exactly. So you know, I think I think it was just a solid A. You know, both Microsoft and Sony with very good conferences mm-hmm. this year. But whereas Microsoft had some of those breaks to talk about features on mm-hmm. Xbox Live that could have easily been in a video. Now, I'm, I will point out there is an interesting critique that some people have where they could say, well, you know, Sony could have just put up a big long YouTube video if you're just going to show back to back to back to back trailers. Like, you need context, you need all this. Yes and no. I, I think maybe Sony kind of went the extreme route here with just showing video after video after mm-hmm. video. And. Yeah, I think I would have maybe liked a little more context, but I don't need three minutes of a dev standing on stage telling you what makes the game great. I'd rather have the game 
show why it's right mm -hmm. or telling you what's going on in the mm -hmm. demo you're seeing or yeah and i think the that's, process of making and i think game. that's where sony succeeded like the trailers and the demos that they showed really highlighted the the really mm -hmm. the features of the game quite well. right uh, I think I actually have to give it an A minus because I think the Days Gone uh, demo really just sort of ended it on a sour note. Like that was whoever made the decision to end the show on that uh, should be reprimanded probably. Not fired. This they did a good job otherwise because man, we were actually having like reactions to yeah, things yeah. on mm -hmm. the screen and that didn't happen with any of no. the other. There conferences. were legitimate surprises at Sony's conference. Yeah. yeah, to have that Resident Evil logo pop up like, "Oh, yeah. this is E3." Like right. this is it. That yeah. was that was the first time this entire show this year where it felt like, "Oh, now we're getting into it. Oh, it's over." So, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to give them an A minus though, even though they were the definition of show don't tell. Mm -hmm. uh, do I think that all uh, conferences should be like this from here on, where it's just show a game, show a game, show a game, no talking, nothing? Not really, because I think they took it a little to the extreme, mm -hmm. where they barely talked at all. But at the same time, this was the clear standout winner of the big conferences, I think. They had things to actually show. Yeah. It wasn't just fluff things. They were trying to fill the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I guess the other maybe knock that you could put against mm -hmm. Sony is that many of those games were, it's in development 2017 mm -hmm. maybe. And it's just like, yo, what do you have for this year? And this is where, you know, their third-party development is, is really strong and their partnerships that way. Where, yeah, I mean, they have Gran Turismo Sport and they have The Last Guardian, but they don't need something huge for the fall. And, I mean, and, that's... Yeah. That's still been a flaw with, with Sony overall, is that even last year, most of the games they announced last year aren't out yet. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have to go with an A for sure. This is definitely, it was definitely my favorite conference uh, so far. Microsoft still had a fantastic conference. This is nothing against great. Microsoft. Yeah. Um, I like the, I, I always get excited for new hardware announcements. Um, there was some pacing issues with theirs, which I felt Sony didn't have. There were some strange choices, be it like the Lego Star Wars and the ending with Days at, or Days Gone. But the, Sony's conference was the first one to legitimately have me go, "Oh, oh my God, no way!" You yeah, know yeah. those mm -hmm. moments with Kojima or the Resident Evil trailer, because the entire time that trailer was going on, we was like, "What is this?" Yeah, mm -hmm. had no we idea. had no idea what it was going to be, and when they flashed at the end that it was Resident Evil Seven Biohazard, yeah. it was just like, like I was so clueless. I said it could be a new Condemned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were throwing out different ideas. What could it be? What could it be? This could it be that? And then it was Resident Evil that was that looks like such a departure from the run and gun that we're used to these days, and back to like creepy horror, creepy horror. Um, I, I was very, I was very pleasantly surprised by Sony. I didn't think I was going. I didn't think we were going to get as good of a conference from Sony as yeah, we did. No, they they had a high bar to set and they reached it, and uh, I think it's a good sign. More live orchestras in the future. That yeah, that was that. that was a fantastic touch to hear that playing throughout it but well that's it we got nintendo next so thank you all for stopping in and we'll see you all next time